Hello everybody. I want to continue my quest on the one wire and the wireless power transmission system with Tesla and for those of you who have seen my video before you have realized that I did not connect the secondaries to each other anymore. I used the capacitor and I have done that on purpose. So you saw that it was through the capacitor um, capable to um, draw some energy on the receiving side. So the next step is literally um, a logical consequence. If we assume that the capacitor has two plates um, in distance to each other and charged as well, that means that the dielectric is between them, we have no physical contact of the sides. So why not removing the capacitors here and replace them via two terminals. The bare mindset is a kind of system which Tesla did build as the Wallcliff Tower, where he had his idea to transmit power um, over the globe and for everybody to draw the power um, for free. There have been many um, developers, scientists and um, yeah, any kind of hobbyist on the subject. I remember, well, I worked uh, quite closely together with Steve in, in a wireless forum. Um, one of the main problems about that subject is that everybody is using solid state technologies, using low power. And if you want to experience it, and I mentioned it more than once, you have to use high voltage you have to go the full mile like Tesla did. Of course, Tesla had no solid state, but he could not, could not have done it uh, with solid state. And I can prove it quite easily here. So what, what kind of setup do we have here? We have on the left hand side, you see the transmitting system. So both coils are now quite in distance to each other. And you see two terminals in between. On the right hand side you see then a load which is the fluorescent bulb which is connected to the capacitor and very important I will go over that later on in, the, in, the, um, in detail. You see the outcoming side from the capacitor goes both into the same terminal on the fluorescent bulb. The question is why? So everybody who is familiar with radio technologies they know why because what I'm doing here is I'm shunting literally the output and by shunting it I'm placing a resistance over the terminals and what does that do? Yes, it's dampen. It dampens the signal, that means the Q is reduced but the bandwidth is increased. By doing that I capture all the frequencies I didn't capture because I haven't tuned it properly I can capture them and then um, the return terminal will be to ground. So, a word to the return terminals. On the left hand side, it's connected to my network in the garden. On the right hand side, at the moment, it's connected to the house, to the house ground. And for those of you who think there is potential on it, I measured it, there is zero potential, there is zero voltage on it. And I have no running um, power system currently in my house running during my tests. On uh, the transformer side I'm using a single pole in my garden as a crowning system. So we have three reference crown systems not physically connected to together. The only connection is the crown. That's very important to note. Okay, let's capture now some of the details. So I have reduced capacitance on both sides to 10 nanofarad. I use the bifilar coil as a driving coil. Here you see the ground connectivity. So that goes to the one terminal here. Second terminal. It goes to the receiving coil. Receiving coil is terminated to ground. Ground termination goes to the bulb and very important I use the same 
10 nanofarad capacitor. Um, there will be some, hopefully can capture that, not quite sure it's quite bright. Um, what I experienced as well is because of my magnetic field between the spark gap, the, the spark is dancing between right and left hand side. Um, intermitting, it's not, uh, there is a frequency on it, but I'm not sure if I will be able to capture that. But we will see, let's have a look. So we'll start up the system now. It will be very noisy, so I probably will voice over the um, sequence. So I have to start the vacuum cleaner as well. So because of the noise and um, the problems that you can't hear my voice anymore. So I started the vacuum cleaner, so the spark gap is initiating the first uh, spark. It becomes then very, very consistent and bright. So the magnet, magnets in between with um, together with the vacuum cleaner is providing a very consistent power flow. So I will now um, attempt to increase the distance between the terminals to see what kind of influence that has on the brightness of the output load. Just a little maybe fun side, maybe not. Um, I try to do that during the runtime of um, the transmitter and I got badly shocked so I touched literally the plastic on the side and I got a 5 centimeter spark to my hand. Um, it was not painful but it, uh, I, was, I was very surprised at to say at least. Um, by increasing the distance between the terminals I realize intermitting um, fluctuation or fluctuation of the power delivery into the output load. What I notice as well is that that has a direct impact on the sparking characteristic. characteristic. So that's definitely an indicator that the load through the ground back into the input system has an influence. How much influence and to what level needs to be investigated? and how that can be compensated um, with um, different um, system setup. I will test. But there is definitely a relationship and I, uh, and I assume it is also based on the condition of the grounding. So we had we had a couple of weeks we had rain. Since the last five d days it did not rain. We had bright sunshine so it's it's fairly it's fairly dry. I was expecting also the um, um, a released or let's say decreased amount of energy on the receiving side. So this is absolutely normal and it's expected that way. So well we have never seen that in, 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 in real life but I assume there's a tremendous amount of power needed to send um, into the ground and using the capacitor plate as a terminal um, into the air. His idea was to send the information or let's say the power up in a terminal up to the ionosphere and use it as a conducting um, um, entity as in conducting a pass over to uh, the receiving um, systems. Well that wouldn't be that wouldn't be possible without a tremendous amount of energy putting into the system. And what I just replicated is that there is definitely a relationship between the distance and the power out, um, output. How much it is, I haven't have only scratched now the surface. I just started to investigate that. That has been done uh, more closely. But uh, what I have done here, what I have re replicated now for you, is a hundred percent replication of transmission via the ground. So before we move on to my experiment, I want to make sure that what I'm showing to you is genuine. I did place in parallel here um, to a fluorescent bulb just to show you that there is no dielectric field or whatever field you think there might be which is strong enough to illuminate here the load which is connected. So just to be sure that my test is accurate, that there is no 
kind of dielectric field. My expectation is that the two additional fluorescent bulbs, which just supposed to be in a field, will not illuminate because there is no power. The only power is available via my output load. Let's get started with the system. So as you will see the load is fully illuminated. However, both the fluorescent bulb which I'm parallel to it did not show any sign of power inside because there is no power. So the distance to um, the exciting coils are far um, too far away in order to have any influence here. So that is important because if that would be not the case the test results would be influenced and would not be accurate. So I want to make sure that we are all aware um, that that is genuine. One of the additional um, recommendations for the power draw is between the terminals to spark. So the spark is again uh, in a medium drawing energy into the system and um, that should increase the power output. Um, it's going to be noisy again, or probably you will not hear me, so I would have to voice over. Stop. So that is going to be very, very noisy. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a nice noise when you hear the running spark between the terminals. Um, I have not measured here the power output directly, so, so the bulb becomes much brighter. I have done other tests which I have not shown so far, which are very, very interesting which um, at least by 200-300% increases the output. Very important to notice here that the input power does not change at all. It's the opposite. Um, when I spark through, the input power goes slightly lower. I hope to show, um, I will produce a couple of videos in the future where I go through this specific phenomenon because that is quite important um, to note and to show. So there are other systems you can spark to ground which also increase a tremendous amount of more energy but I will go to that um, to a later stage. The next challenge if I choose to accept it. As you can see here I have elevated terminals. They are about five meters high and they are across around 9 meter so I would like to use these two terminals as my terminal posts they have coax cable connected to it so they should be then one on the transmitter side and one on the receiver side not sure how to tackle that now but um, I will find a way and I keep you posted bye